Hi, I'm Alex Paradise. In today's webinar, we're going to discuss why human error is not a root cause. A lot of times I've had these people come to me and they've asked, you know, what about human error? We see it all over on uh, different types of reports of investigations. The cause was pilot error. You know, the reason why their car wrecked was human error, bad driver, driver error. You see these things come up. I saw uh, articles put out about the leading cause of accidents in road vehicles is driver error, or the leading cause of data breaches is human error. And today we want to discuss why human error is not a root cause. I hear it come up, and what I want to start with is the definition of a root cause. How do we know human error is not a root cause? Well, we need to look at the definition. So first, what is a root cause? A root cause is a missing best practice or piece of knowledge that would have prevented a problem. Would have prevented the incident, would have prevented the consequences, the severity of the incident. When we do root cause analysis, we're not looking for who to blame or who messed up. We're looking for what's missing in our system that would have prevented pro the problem. So, if human error is not a root cause, what is it? Why does it matter to investigations? Is it even worth looking for? When you're doing investigations, you need to identify where your system broke down. One of the easiest ways to identify where your system's gaps are is to look at where mistakes are being made. Where is the system not operating where it should be? How is it encouraging people to make mistakes, and setting people up for failure. So the first thing we look for is to look for mistakes and errors. And so human errors are not root causes. What they are are symptoms of a bad system. They're errors that our system allows and encourages. In taproot, root cause analysis, we call these causal factors. Mistakes, errors, or equipment failures that lead to the incident. So a good investigation process is going to have you understand what happened, identify where in your system these errors are occurring, and look for best practices that will make those errors less likely or make the consequence of those errors less uh, severe. So it's the starting point of a good investigation. It's not the end of an investigation. Now, we think about these errors in Taproot in a couple different types of categories. Uh, when we look at people making mistakes and human error, um, we start with individual performance. Oftentimes, people make mistakes on an individual level. Maybe they were distracted or fatigued or dealing with some sort of outside stimulus that's causing people to make a, a mistake or, or miss some key piece of information. We also look at things related to how people interact with their equipment and their environment because oftentimes environmental factors can lead people to be more likely to make mistakes. There's also elements of knowledge, training, and things like procedures. You know, I have seen plenty of procedures that were wrong. And if somebody was following that procedure as it was written, they end up making a mistake. So you have to look at these individual performance factors that are leading people to make mistakes. There's also another element of team performance. We have supervisors, we have team leaders, and there's a role of sharing and communicating information. Here are the hazards present. Here are the different types of problems that you might encounter on a job. That's why we do things like pre-job briefings. So the way we communicate information can make people more likely or less likely to make mistakes. Lastly, we, in Taproot, we look at management system performance. Do we have rules that will set people up for success or failure? Do we communicate those rules effectively? Do we make sure that those rules are properly enforced? So we have this process of creating these 
management systems and work direction systems that are guiding workers and providing structures to make sure those systems are operating as we intend them to. So we look at those three elements in Taproot to say, okay, we have someone made a mistake. That's not the end of an investigation, it's the start. What in our process is setting them up for success and failure? Once you understand that, you can then look for the missing best practices that are allowing those mistakes to occur. And you can look at setting your system up for success by closing those gaps, applying that missing best practice and knowledge. This is how we uncover potential best practices to prevent human error. Now, when we think about someone making a mistake, we also want to be proactive. We don't want to just rely on the more administrative type controls. We want to think about human engineering, mistake proofing, and resilience. When I think of mistake proofing, I often think about as a medical example, they give you, uh, there's several different types of, of uh, airlines and different um, gases that are piped around a hospital and there's different colors of lines but if everything had the same connector someone might make a mistake and instead of plugging into the oxygen line they would plug into uh, maybe some other type of, of airline and we could have an exposure where we're exposing somebody to a gas that was not intended to be breathed and you could have that problem so instead of just relying on people to read a label, for example, mistake proofing would have us have a different connector for each of those lines so that I could not plug the wrong line into something it wasn't supposed to be plugged into. When we think about human error, it's not that somebody made a mistake, it's that the system allowed for them to make that mistake. So by mistake proofing your process, you're making it so that mistake can't exist. Another way to deal with human error is to think about resilience. How do you make a system resilient to a mistake? Just because someone makes one mistake, that doesn't result in catastrophic failure. I, I often like to think about uh, a barrel that's filling up. Well, if I've got a resilient system, it's not going to rely on a person to notice that the barrel is full in order to stop it. Because if I have to wait until the barrel is overflowing to realize, whoop, we're overfilled, that's not a very resilient system. I would want to have an alarm that says we're getting to a point where this barrel is almost full. That has to happen at a point where I have time to react to it. And even more resilient, it shouldn't just rely on me to stop it off having things like floater valves or other safeguards in place that would stop it if, for some reason, my action didn't work. Resilience helps prevent human errors from becoming severe incidents. Thirdly, we think about improving human performance with good human factor design. Now, what is good human factor design? My personal definition for good human factor design is design that makes it easy to do right, hard to do wrong. When we think about easy to do right, is it intuitive? Is the answer obvious for this is, of course, how we would do this? I always like to think to the example of a Norman door. Uh, a Norman door is, and I'm sure you've come across these in your life. Let's say you're walking up to a building and you see this uh, vertical bar. Your brain automatically thinks with a vertical bar and a door, I should grab and pull it. But when you got to that door and you went to pull it, it, it closed. It was a push. Or, I'm sure you've had this as well, you have a horizontal bar and you go up to it to push it and it's a pull and you headbutt the wall. It happens. It's a Norman door. So bad design sets you up for failure. So you need to think about how you make your designs intuitive, your processes easy to do right. Intuitive to do right, easy to do right, and hard to do wrong. By setting ourselves up for success in processes, 
we can realize how to make improvements. This gets us away from looking at human error as a cause. Of course people are going to make mistakes. But they're really a symptom, a symptom of a bad system. And our responsibility in investigations is not to look at who messed up, but look at what was missing from our system that would have made it impossible for them to make that mistake in the future. Or maybe more realistically in some cases, less likely that somebody would make that mistake in the future. So I hope that's given you a simple understanding of why human error is not a root cause, but it is a causal factor that we want to investigate and we want to find root causes that can fix. If you want to learn more about root cause analysis and how to get away from blame and blaming the person and get down to systemic problems that you can have control and you can fix, maybe check out a Taproot course. We've got them globally and we've also got them virtually. So you can find one near you or that you can get access to. We do them in different time zones around the world. I hope to see you in a future course.